Hello friends, welcome to this week's landscape photography vlog, and we are back on the island of Madeira. In this video we take a beautiful hike through the fog, I show you how to pick out different compositions, and some various shooting techniques, and I also witness one of the most spectacular scenes that I've ever had the pleasure of capturing. I really hope you enjoy the video. Check this out. All that drama down there, the clouds moving. The weather has been very tricky on this island, almost impossible to predict. And every single time we've looked at any sort of forecast, it's been inaccurate. So it's kind of one of those things where you just have to drive around and go. I'm certainly glad we decided to go this time. Wow, look at this. Amazing, really amazing. That is so cool. Take a quick shot here. We got the handy dandy 100 to 400 lens, and I'm just going to focus in on that, that peak out there in the distance. See if we can get a clean shot of it. Really beautiful. I'm at about 100 millimeters. I almost wish I was a bit wider. I'm just hand holding, making sure that my shutter speed is high enough. Wow, look at that. Amazing. We got the Nikon FE camera, and uh, I've got the 75 to 150 on here. And gotta get a film shot of this. Just gonna shoot this at F8. 250th of a second should be good. So here's the film version of that composition shot at about 75 millimeters. The wider frame allowed me to get a little bit more of the ridge on the left side and show more of the waves down below. I always find it fun to shoot a mix of digital and film and then kind of compare the two. But now I'd like to hear from you, which version of this image do you prefer more? Do you like this tighter digital crop or do you like this wider film version? Please let me know in the comments. Ooh, you know what? I think I found a shot again. This is gonna happen a lot. <laughs> Love that, that spire down there. I don't know if you can see it with the GoPro, but it looks really cool. After photographing that scene, I kept wandering up the hill, and once I got to the top, I was met with a breathtaking view. Oh my god. Oh, look at that. It was really hard to put into words just how incredible this moment was. I knew I'd want to shoot some wide-angle frames of this perspective, also including some of the beautiful foreground around me. But first I decided to shoot a few more telephoto compositions. So it looks like the peak just disappeared. Ooh, but I see the peaks revealed up at the top. With how fast everything was shifting and kind of the overwhelming nature of this shoot, it was sometimes tough to find a balanced composition. So for this one, rather than showing the whole mountain, I focused on these two ridges that met right in the middle and then waited a bit to capture the dramatic clouds and some birds flying around the scene. Right now, we've got a giant cloud engulfing the entire mountain scene, but right down here, we've got some very beautiful flowers. So I pulled out the wide angle lens, 16 to 35 
on the Sony A1. And I plan on doing F16, ISO 400, and then just having the shutter speed be quick enough to handhold, because I want to be very quick for when the mountain is revealed out of the fog and we get some of that light. But I felt like this would make for a really nice wide angle frame with about two thirds of the foreground in the mountain, and then maybe about one third sky. And actually I see the mountain coming out a bit already. So pretty quickly after this moment, I decided it probably would be best to get out my tripod. So this is a bit of a tricky shot to get. I'm doing a vertical here at probably about 20 millimeters and I'm trying to see some of this foreground down in here, having to do a focus stack for the foreground. But you'll notice it's such a high dynamic range scene that I'm also gonna have to do a bit of an exposure blend too. <laughs> so I think in Photoshop, this is gonna end up being a bit of a construction project, but uh, yeah, it could come out really nice. I mean, this is just absolutely spectacular. So I titled this image Hula Dancer because to me it kind of represents that with the bottom foliage making up the grass skirt and then the ridge line of the mountain kind of making up the arms. I'm not sure if you also see that too, but if you have a different interpretation of this image, I'd love to hear it. I also shot an image with more flowers in the foreground and here's how that turned out. So for this one I picked a moment where the mountain was more engulfed in fog and I felt like it made this nice little triangle spire and you have the triangle shape of the foreground and even triangle shape of the flowers that kind of lead right up into the center of the image. Overall this was just a really fun one to shoot. After capturing those wide angle scenes I decided to pop up my drone and see what things looked like from a different perspective and I was absolutely blown away with what I saw. So this is definitely a lot more simple than the wide angle shots I was just working on. This was a nice single exposure and I made sure to expose for the highlights and then I brought up the shadows in post. I really like how some of the textures made a nice X shape here that leads you right towards the center of the composition and the color contrast between the bluish tones in the shadowed part of the fog and that vivid warm light worked really well for this photograph. All right, last shot of the roll, 24 millimeter lens. I'm gonna overexpose it by about, I think I can only do one third of a stop here. There we go. One more roll down, Portra 160. Okay, so I decided to set up a regular time lapse here of this scene. And I'm doing 0.5 of a second for my exposure to get a little bit of a long exposure here. F 6.3, ISO 100, and I've got a filter on there too, just to reduce the exposure a bit. That was an experience. <laughs> that was amazing. That was uh, really 
better than I ever thought it could be when I started this video. So if I can give you three takeaways from this video, the first is when it comes to shooting fog or any quickly changing condition, it's important to be versatile. So in this situation, I had my telephoto lens and for a lot of the time I was hiking with it just in case a new opportunity presented itself. The second takeaway is something I talk about a lot, but it has to do with spending more time in the landscape and scouting. I was out at the spot for a good three or four hours just playing around and it allowed me to get a variety of different photographs. And if I only planned on showing up for sunset, I definitely would have been more limited. And the third takeaway is having some patience because fog photography or really any landscape photography sometimes takes a lot of waiting. And in this situation where the mountain got completely engulfed in fog, there was definitely some moments where I didn't know if it was gonna come back or not. And sometimes it's easy to get discouraged in those moments and feel like, well, I've waited 10 minutes, it's probably not coming back, I'm just gonna leave. But most of the time, it's a good idea to power through that and just see what happens. Because in this case, it allowed me to get some of my favorite shots of the trip. With that, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.